120 film was a film introduced by Kodak in the early part of the 19th century and it and 35mm film became the most popular films of all time. 35mm film of course used in smaller cameras, 120 film often nowadays referred to as medium format. Now medium format gives you better grain, the quality of prints is better, the only issue with it is you only get 12 prints on a row. But that 12 prints can be quite useful because it really makes you think carefully. Now a lot of medium format cameras are very expensive like the Hasselbaud and to, to, um, the Mamiya's. Great cameras, worth getting, especially if you're going to do a lot of work in photography. But sometimes you want something lighter and you don't want to spend all that money. Now in the 1940s, 50s, the folding cameras were still very popular and here is a folding camera. This is a folding camera called an Isolet. Now Isolets were made by Agfa and they started making them before the Second World War and continued after and they became a very popular camera. And if you find an Isolet, I would on the whole really recommend it. There is one slight issue. Now this is a Isolet L and the thing about the L is it has a light meter. Most isolates, well all isolates apart from the L, um, don't have light meters. And the isolet L does have another slightly different feature, that is to open the camera you have to press this little button on the side. So open the, and there we are, one of the isolet L. Now the problem with isolates can be the material of the bellows. The early um, bellows were made from leather and you still find this in some of the Fortlander and Zeiss cameras or of sort of simulated leather. Agfa were quite daring and used a type of plastic. Now in my early experience using isolates this nearly always leaks. You would get an isolate that looked in fantastic condition and as soon as you put a film in you would find that it was um, problems when you developed it and find there was light leaks. Now there is a system of checking light leaks and that is, I've got no film in this camera so I can open it, if you are in a darkened room and you shine a torch through there in a darkened room you should be able to see any pinholes. Now, as I said, I used a number of isolates and had this slight problem with holes. I found a way around it that if I got some black paint and um, acrylic paint that was quite good at filling the holes. Probably not the long term solution but would work for a moment. And the other thing that I found out it worked was a little bit of black tape that would work. The proper way of solving leaky bellows is to obviously replace the bellows. That is a job that some people do do um, and there is a possibility still of buying bellows online but it's a little bit more complex than I would want to achieve. Now having said that, all that, I have found a number of um, adverts without leaky bellows. So maybe I was wrong at first sight to say that all adverts leak. Perhaps the majority. <laughs> well this one doesn't and I had a Agfa record which is a nice 6x9 camera and that was super. Now let's just go through a little bit of the workings of this camera. First of all I really liked the feature in here to load the film because you can I say easily, you can easily put a film in there, this comes out here, this comes up at the top, this causes the empty rule spool to go here, full spool here and over. So nice and easy to load the film. You see what number you are on here, so you wind on until you get to one. Now. There is no range finder so you have to set the focus according to either a measured focus using a popped on range finder or I normally guesstimate it. Um, and this camera 
is in feet. So this camera is interestingly made for the UK market. So I always think a six feet as being one person. So I think how many people? So you set the feet there. You set your shutter speed you've got from 125th to 200th of a second. Now to set the shutter, you have to bring this little spring over and that sets the shutter. On a modern camera, the shutter is automatically set when you rewind the film on. On these 50s cameras, it's not the case. So you have to set the shutter here. Now, the last thing um, is taking the aperture reading. And to do this, you point the camera at the thing you are photographing. You adjust the needle or you match the needle with the pointer and then you read off the f-stop you've decided or the shutter speed. So I'm going to assume I've got brighter light like I did yesterday and if I had bright light on a hundred of a second it would be 5.6. If you have one of these and the meter isn't working or you have a normal isolate without a meter either use a separate meter or do something called the sunny 16 rule, which is if it's very bright, it's F16, cloudy bright F11, um, cloudy F8, very dull 5.6. So you set everything up, click and wind on. There is a, such a perfection mechanism in here so once you've clicked you can't re-click okay so you have to wind on as i said some of these leak but this one i found to be excellent i took it out yesterday taking photographs and i will now just tell you how i got on with it using this camera is really straightforward once you've got the idea of aperture focus not a good shot from the viewer point of view here as i seem to have a tree growing out of my head um, but the result on the agro was fine now walking by the river this is the river in dorchester looking towards the town i couldn't remember how to open the camera but once we get the camera open i can focus adjust the aperture Yes, it's not exactly the fastest camera, but it makes you think as a photographer. And our thinking process, I think, is sometimes important. The most important thing, obviously, is what you are photographing and your composition and whether you've got everything set up for that. Now, this view is looking across the water meadows to the town. There we are. This is a very typical November day looking towards the town of Dorchester by the old Ford here. This is a walk I very much enjoy doing and it's mentioned in the famous um, book The Mayor of Castlebridge. We have here what I'm just about to photograph. Again I have to do all, all those adjustments. Well, if you're doing similar photographs you can sometimes get away with the same aperture but I always check my aperture and this is what we call the ten gates and it's in the book The Mayor of Castlebridge. Very moody I thought but that was okay. We're lucky at the moment in Dorchester the town and countryside sort of meet. Unfortunately there's a big plan to build 4,000 houses just north of where I'm standing now. I completely understand the need of new houses but it does seem a shame to take away this countryside. Um, sheep are very much part of Dorset and what I could have used on this camera I think is a yellow filter. I think a yellow filter would have really helped enhance the background here but this is okay. Again I wonder if my composition I it's a little bit cutting it in half there. 
he could have done and you can see in actual fact there's quite a lot of clouds in the sky but not having a yellow filter on the camera means if I'm filming in black and white I do lose some of that detail. Um, when I did a lot of black and white I always kept the yellow filter with me. See if that's a little bit better I think I probably slightly underexposed that, but it's brought out the detail in the cloud a little bit more. Um, very stark tree there, but I quite like that. So in conclusion, I was really pleased with this camera. Yes, there's a lot more to set than your point and shoot, but you get the delights of medium format. It's really useful to have an um, explosion meter on the camera. If you find an Isolet L, and I haven't seen many of them, when I found this one I was really excited because I just haven't seen them before, but if you find one, I reckon they're very well worth having a go with. Thank you again for watching. Bye for now.